Hi all, this is Alessandro from Sonora Cinematic, and the music you're listening to comes from our brand new library, Aria Vocalscapes. Vocalscapes is the very first library to feature our brand new Aria engine, and in this video I want to show you in depth how it works. This video will not provide you with several sound examples from Aria Vocalscapes, so if that's what you're looking for, check out this video instead. I'll also link it to the description down below. Let's get started. The core concept behind the Aria engine is a two-layer instrument where articulations can be either stacked or cross-faded. To choose an articulation, all you need to do is click on one of the layers to reveal the sounds menu, and then pick the one you want. You can also double-click on it to select it and return to the main page. The same list of articulations is also accessible directly from the main menu in this side panel. The volume of both layers can be adjusted independently, and you can use the fade switch to determine whether or not the layer is going to fade in or out accordingly to the movement of the cursor on the XY pad. If the fade switch is on, the x-axis is used to cross-fade between the two selected articulations. If the fade switch is off, then the two layers will play at full volume independently from the cursor position on the XY pad, uh, which means that the two layers can be stacked on top of each other, playing together rather than cross-fading. You can also choose to keep a layer constantly on and fade in or out the other. To give you a tiny bit of extra control over the sound, you have access to expression, uh, which controls the overall volume and defaults to be uh, controlled by MIDI CC11, which is pretty much the standard, but you can reassign it to whatever you like directly in contact. Dal Niente simply defines whether or not there is a tiny bit of sound left when the expression slider is all the way down. Attack and release should be self-explanatory. A layer B offset is an interesting feature that allows you to offset the pitch of layer B relatively to layer A. You can achieve some really interesting results by doing this. Another fundamental feature of the Aria engine is the fact that you can assign any parameter to be controlled by any of the two axes in the XY pad. Let's see how. I'm going to navigate to the Filters and LFOs page, and here I turn the filter switch on. This activates a 24 dB per octave low-pass filter on the selected layer. Now, let's say that I want to control the filter's cutoff using the Y axis. All I do is turn the XY pad modulation switch on, set it to Y, and define the modulation range. You can use the same technique with as many parameters as you like. For example, I am now going to navigate to the effects section of the Aria engine. It offers three different slots that can be loaded with effects. I already have a reverb on slot 3, so let's add some distortion on slot 1. The Cat Stone Box is a cool emulation of a Proco Rat guitar pedal, and a replica delay on slot 2, which I'll put in diffusion mode. The setting in Replica, it's absolutely gorgeous, but be careful when using it because it can be very CPU intensive. If you're familiar with the plugin version of it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It sounds cool, but we can make this preset truly expressive. Similarly to what we did with the filter, I can assign a few parameters from these effects to be controlled by the X or Y axis. When you assign a parameter, the value set before assigning the parameter is treated as the maximum possible value for that parameter, and the modulation range is a variation from that level. I'm going to set the max levels that I want for distortion, filter, and delay send parameters. Now I want to assign distortion and filter to the Y axis and the delay send to the X. I also want to invert the modulation intensity for the filter, so that when the value of the y-axis is high, then the value of the filter is low. Listen to how the sound changes when I move across the pad.
this is a good time to mention that I can assign uh, the two axes to be controlled by any MIDI CC that I want. I can do so by choosing the MIDI CC in the side panel or by simply MIDI learning the control I want to assign. I can click on learn, move a control, job done. The next thing that I want to show you is the motion controller. It's really cool. If you don't want to use MIDI CC uh, to control the movement of the cursor on the XY pad, you can draw pretty much anything you like on the pad and record the motion into an array of X and Y values that the engine stores and plays back for you. To do this, simply press record and start moving the cursor around. Once you release it, the array is saved and you can play it back. Note how even the slowing down and speeding up of your motion gets saved. You can also double or halve the playback speed. You can save the motion as part of a custom snapshot or save it separately using this control so that you can use it in other snapshots. Aria also comes with a few motions ready for you to try. Let's check out a few more features of the engine in the LFO and filters page. We already mentioned that the Aria engine features two completely independent filters. This allows you to set different settings on each layer and crossfade between them. You also have two separate multi-shape LFOs that can be assigned to modulating both the layer volume and the filters cutoff. The LFOs can of course be synced to the host tempo or free running. Together with the LFO and the XY pad, we have a third way to modulate the filter, a step sequencer with variable rate that can have up to 16 steps. It's worth noting that all these modulation possibilities are not mutually exclusive and can instead be used simultaneously on the filter to create truly complex modulation possibilities. Do you know that you can even import your own samples? On the articulations list for each layer, there is a user zone articulation. You can use this area to drag and drop your sample and use it as an articulation. Mind that ARIA will consider the sample to be a C3 and will loop the sample and spread it across the keyboard. I truly hope that you enjoy this engine. I'm getting very excited thinking about all the instruments that we are going to release on this platform. ARIA Vocalscapes is available right now at sonorasinematic.com. Make sure you watch my introducing ARIA Vocalscapes video. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.